Chicken Mavens is well underway at the Ready JCC, Winnipeg's premier daytime concert and lecture series. Music and Mavens features outstanding performers and presenters. Cindy Tugwell is, ex- is the executive director of Heritage Winnipeg, and her presentation, The Economics of Heritage Conservation, takes place tomorrow, Thursday, February 6th. To tell us more about it, she's joined me in the studio this morning. Hello there. Good morning. Welcome to Classic 107. I, I-, I must Thank say, you. Cindy, that you're the first Maven that we have in studio this year. I'm excited. Well, and I'm excited. So before we get chatting about your lecture, I- I'd like to begin by asking you to tell us a little bit about Heritage Winnipeg and uh, your role there as as executive director. Well, I've been there 27 years. My role is uh, changing over the years, a lot of economic development as part of conservation, but uh, we were incorporated as a nonprofit charitable in 78. We're grassroots created by Winnipeggers to help preserve our wonderful heritage stock of buildings. So really we've be, we've diversified, we've gone into digital, we've gone into doors open, uh, different events that we have to showcase our beautiful built heritage. All about that uh, advocacy and education and, and, and planning and redevelopment. Um, like you mentioned, you've been there for 27 years. What what a tenure that is. I just, I feel like I, I, I need to congratulate you on that. It Thanks. really is, it really is a tenure. Um, not, not to put you on the spot, but Are there any particular highlights when you think back on those 27 years? Are there any projects that come to mind? Absolutely. I was Manitoba Governor of the National Trust for Canada for six years. That was exciting. Get to go across the country and find out what all the other cities are doing so that we can come back and compare. Um, Really just the people, the volunteers. When you're in the nonprofit sector, working with volunteers is invigorating Mm. and inspiring. They're wonderful, um, benevolent people. So... That's what's motivating me and keeps me going and doing something for the city that's everlasting for future generations is certainly a motivation also. Uh, when, well, I, I have to admit, when I think Heritage Winnipeg, uh, I of course think of, of, of the he- uh, historic buildings and, and the sites like Upper Fort Gary Park and the Millennium Center, um, but also exploring them in one of my favorite events uh, of the year, Doors Open Winnipeg. What, what a fun opportunity that is. I think that's coming up at end of May, right? The 30th, 31st this year, 17 something? years. 17 this is our 17th years. year. We started it in 2004 with the Downtown Biz in partnership to help get it started. It's exciting. It's growing. Last year, we had 112 buildings and walking tours, hmm. all free, which I'm really proud about because it really gives Winnipeggers and visitors and immigrants an opportunity to learn the history of Winnipeg, but not just build heritage, but social history, cultural spaces, all the spaces that, that really we normally drive by every year and want to say, what's in that building? I want to learn more about it. And people love it. It's growing. I think we had about 32,000 site visits last year. Uh, that is a remarkable number. And and just that, that curiosity, it, it, it piques a lot of our interest, right? And and, and, and for me, I, I, I enjoy history. I enjoy reading about Winnipeg history um, and exploring it. But I, I'm curious for you, when did you know you wanted to make a, a career out of it? It, it just happened inadvertently. I <laughs> yeah. was um, involved in business, and I think that nonprofits really have to bring a savvy business mind to the to the organization to keep it solvent. And I think that it excited me because it was an area I didn't know much about. I didn't learn a lot of great history. And when I started learning about Winnipeg's history, I got more and more excited. And I thought, why aren't we screaming from the rooftops how amazing our city and our province is? So, and I really love this city. I'm a native Winnipegger. So it just excited me. And the creativity of being able to create events, projects, things that we do is really inspiring. You you really have an opportunity to get in there, find out what people want and be able to deliver that. Um, so speaking of, of, of getting in there, uh, here you are all these years <laughs> later. Um, and as the name of the daytime concert and lecture series implies, a, a maven, an, an expert. And uh, tomorrow... Uh, you're going to be presenting the economics of heritage conservation. Uh, let me begin by asking, what, what, what does that mean? Well, I really wanted to bring to light to Winnipeggers what I've been realizing over the years is a lot of people don't understand how complicated heritage conservation is. Mm-hmm. And when I talk about the economics, it's really what the politicians want to hear, the developers want to hear. People want to hear that this is these projects are feasible, these building rehabilitations, the things that we do, particularly with the Exchange District as a national historic site, landmark buildings in the downtown, and even significant heritage buildings in all parts of the city, St. Patel, St. James, Transcona, and they're all different and they're all different situations and I think it's the complexity that I want to bring forward of how important the economics are we look at the economics we don't just save old buildings I know we get criticized you know if it's old heritage Winnipeg wants to save it we are really in the last 10 years looking at the economics how we can we make it viable and how can we work with 
developers and professionals to make the get rid of the red tape, maybe streamline it better, maybe make it because we really believe that our heritage buildings are an asset and not a liability. Are you going to be drawing on kind of past projects um, uh, to give to give um, uh, attendees a sort of example? Uh, would, you, would you mind sharing some of those? Some well, of I, I mean, this is our 35th anniversary for our annual preservation awards coming up on February. 18th, and I think 35 years of broad scope of, of heritage projects from small projects to replacing windows to large multi uh, million dollar rehabilitation projects like the Fortune Block on Main Street. I think we're going to use examples to show the complexity, but to show that with support from the public sector, from the government, the local government, the major benefits, economic benefits, and the spin offs, not just from the rehabilitation itself but the economic spin-offs that come from that. Oh, well, uh, wh- what, do you, what do you hope to instill in, in attendees uh, t- tomorrow? What do you want them to take away from, from the lecture? I really want them to take away the fact that it's really important to save our built heritage. It's part of our history. It's our identity. It's mm. who we are. Um, it makes walkable, livable c- neighborhoods and communities. And I really feel that to say it's just an old building and we're trying to save it is really um, undermining the real full breadth. We go to Europe and we travel to faraway cities all over the world to see historic monuments and to learn about their history. And Winnipeggers should know that we have an amazing history. We were the gateway to the West and we certainly were the fastest growing city in Canada, second to Toronto and Montreal. We are a force to be reckoned with and I want to instill that pride and understanding that we do what we do because we love it. Well, most certainly sounds like a, a fascinating lecture. Uh, Cindy, I want to thank you so much for coming by Classic 107 today. Thank you today. for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, and we appreciate it very much. Uh, Cindy Tugwell, the Executive Director of Heritage Winnipeg. Uh, she presents the Economics of Heritage Conservation as part of the Music and Maven's Daytime Concert and Lecture Series down at the Rady JCC. That's tomorrow, Thursday, February 6th, 2 p.m. For more information, visit radyjcc.com.